Uh, greetings to you. Today's teaching I've titled um, Around the World in 2000 Years. And um, it's part two, and its uh, subheading is The Awakening. Uh, but before we get into it, I would just like to briefly go over the area, uh, the material we went through uh, in part one. Um, actually, um, that was by way of giving you an overview of actually where we are going. Uh, we started off in roughly um, 70 AD, but uh, I did state that uh, the dispersal or the scattering of the Hebrew people had begun long before, but I think but the scattering was actually completed or partially uh, in 70 AD and then it continued later on with the great slave trade and the further dispersal of the people of the Hebrew people throughout the world. Uh, so we put, touched on the f point fact that um, the Hebrews were actually um, um, thrown out, or yeah, thrown out by the uh, Gentiles out of Jerusalem, partially, partly in punishment for their uh, unbelief and. Um, they were sent into the um, to the Gentile nations as uh, to do a, a very important job, which is actually to uh, preach the uh, the gospel and teach the Gentiles about the great God, Haya, uh, and uh, his uh, son Yeshaya, who was a uh, sacrifice for the sins of the world. Uh, and I said this process was going to continue. Uh, and will be completed by the two witnesses in Revelation. So anyway, basically, I'm going to give you an ov overview today, which will cover roughly some of the material we're going to cover uh, in today's teaching. And then also, we'll be going backwards and forwards, and even going back to part one and touching and looking forward to part three and possibly part four. So our overview begins with Luke uh, 2.32, which reads um, from the voice translation that um, he is the light who reveals your message to the, um, to the other nations, the non-Jewish nations, the world, the Gentiles, and he's the shining glory of your covenant people, Israel. Um, in Acts uh, 13.47, it reads, um, this is what the Lord told us to do. Um, he has commanded us saying, I have made, appointed you a light for the nations, the, the Gentiles. Uh, you will show people all over the world the way to be saved, to bring salvation to the ends of the earth. And in Acts uh, one. Eight, it reads, to this uh, he replied, you cannot know times and dates which have been fixed by the Father's sole authority, but you are to be given power when the Holy Spirit has come to you. You will be witnesses to me, not only in Jerusalem, not only through Judea, not only in Samaria, but to the ends of the earth. So basically, Jesus, the Messiah, is um, is uh, the shining glory of uh, the covenant between God and his people. Uh, and uh, we know that he came through uh, Israel or Yashael. And um, the, so the people who know the Messiah are the, um, uh, the Hebrew people, and they are the ones who are tasked with taking the uh, good news to the rest of the world. Um, telling them about the great salvation. Uh, we continue now. This is um, material that we will, the scripture that we will dwell in more, in more detail in the in the um, in part three and uh, part four of uh, this series. Um, in Isaiah forty nine verse 6 and then 8 and 9, starting off with verse 6, it reads, this is from the voice translation. Uh, 
Uh, as my servant, you will do even more than this, even more than restoring Jacob's family to me and making Israel right with me again. I will make you a light for the nations and you will il uh, illumine them until my salvation reaches the ends of the earth. So here we are, he's clearly talking about the Messiah. He's clearly talking about the Messiah. The, that's the that's how he's going to um, how God's uh, salvation to the world is going to reach the ends of the world through the good news of um, the sac uh, sacrificial um, a lamb. Um, six, eight and nine reads: uh, This is what the Lord says at the right time. Um, I will hear your prayers. On the day of salvation, I will help you, I will protect you, and you will be the sign of my agreement with uh, the people. Um, and uh, the, the agreement here is to, he will establish a covenant with the people. We're talking about the Messiah again. You will bring back the people to the land uh, to restore, rebuild the land, and give them a land the land that is now ruined back to the owners bequeath its desolate herit, uh, inheritances. So here he is talking about saving them firstly from Babylon and then rebuilding Jerusalem. But the language here, and uh, we will see that more when we go into part three, he's actually talking about the Messiah's role in bringing back uh, the lands that have been lost uh, through uh, the agents of darkness, which is basically the whole world. And that is the reason why the uh, the Hebrews have been dispersed throughout the world to actually roll back the, um, uh, the roll back uh, and reclaw or reclaim uh, the lost territory. Uh, part three, uh, no, sorry, in verse nine reads, and you will tell the prisoners, come out. You will tell those in darkness come into the light, show yourselves, appear. The people will eat, they will feed graze beside the roads. The people are symbolically uh, pictured here as, as sheep, and they will feed uh, f uh, in pasture, even on bare ground. So the picture here that is being painted is that when they come out of darkness, they'll be so happy, they will be jumping for joy, and they will have plenty to eat because now they have got the spiritual food, they have been enlightened, they are in the light, and that will bring great joy, and uh, and that will, yeah, that will bring great joy to them. They'll be happy for it. And we continue with our overview. And then in um, 2 Corinthians uh, 6, 2 reads, uh, For God says at the right time, which is something which we mentioned earlier, on the day of salvation I helped you, I will tell I tell you that, behold, the right time, favorable time is now, and behold, look, the day of salvation is now. So we're actually talking, it, 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 it's, it is actually unfolding, it is unfolded and will continue to unfold. Uh, going forward, uh, this great uh, salvation that, that, that uh, was promised us. It is actually now. Um, now. And in Isaiah 42, 6, it reads, The Lord said, I, the Lord, called you to do right or to demonstrate my righteousness, justice, and by my righteous decree in righteousness, I will hold your hand and protect you and keep and guard you. You will be the sign of my agreement with, or my covenant uh, treaty for the people, a light to shine for all the nations. So basically, God, Jesus, the Messiah, is the covenant treaty uh, for the people, which is the Hebrew people, and also, and thereby, or by extension, a light to shine for all the people. Was um, in the, all the nations in the world because the original intention was for God was always for the salvation to, to, to reach the whole world, although he worked it through his people, um, the Hebrew people, or he's working it through the Hebrew people. 
Isaiah 42, 7 reads um, the purpose of um, the great salvation and why they've been sent out in the, in the, in the, in the, um, to the nations is to open blind eyes, to bring out prisoners from the prison, those who sit in darkness from the prison house. Uh, you will help the blind to see, open the blind eyes. You will free those who are in prison and you will lead those who live in darkness out of their prison. So the first part of it is that salvation is what brings people into the light. The vehicle to getting people out of the light was through the Hebrews and of course the uh, subsequent uh, Gentiles and subsequently the Gentile or in addition also the Gentiles who've been converted. So now into the material we talk about now in uh, Acts thirteen forty seven. We are talking about the, the cornerstone of this particular teaching is, and uh, this is what the Lord told us to do. I have appointed you a light to, for the nations, the Gentiles. You will show people all over the world the way to be saved, to bring salvation to the ends of the earth. So this was the great commission given to the Hebrew people to take the, um, to take the gospel to, to the world. They were the light of the world. So the Great Commission begins, is in two parts. Uh, the first part is that uh, you will recall or you recall that when Jesus came, was on earth, you are saying that the message was actually for, he had come for the, for the Hebrew people. And that's where his ministry was. Um, and this is carried, uh, this is confirmed by uh, James 1 1, where he talks about James, a bond servant of God and of the Lord, um, Jesus Christ, to the 12 tribes which are scattered abroad. So he was taking the message to the scattered tribes of the, abroad to tell them of the great, uh, of the good news of the salvation that had come through the crucifixion, death, and resurrection of our Lord Jesus. Peter confirms the same thing. Uh, in Peter, uh, 1 Peter 1, where he says, Peter, an apostle of Jesus Christ, to the pilgrims of the dispersion in Pontus, Galatia, Cappadocia, Asia, and Bethlehem, elect according to the foreknowledge of uh, God the Father in sanctification of the Spirit for obedience and sprinkling uh, of the uh, blood of Jesus Christ. Um, so he is talking about those who are uh, in the dispersion. Um, so I would like to say here that the Hebrews were commanded to take the gospel to to the to the to the Hebrews first in the diaspora, uh, and also and thereafter, or at the same time, or soon after, to the Gentile nations, all the world uh, in the known world, and also. Uh, Sorry, to, to people in the Jew, Hebrew people in the diaspora, um, in the Gentile nations, and uh, in the uh, known world, and they also to the uh, to the Gentiles. But you will also understand that the history of it all is that actually the the church was formed in Jerusalem and grew out of Jerusalem and dispersed throughout the world. In John seventeen one uh, nineteen, it reads. I have sent them into the world. This is uh, our Lord Jesus talking and from the Philips, Philips translation. I have sent them to the world just as you sent me to the world and I consecrate myself to this for their sakes and that uh, they have, they may be made holy by the truth. In Matthew 28, 19, it reads, therefore, Make apostles of all the nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all things that I have commanded you. And lo, I am with you always, even to the end of the age. Uh, we continue in in Acts um, one eight, which we we uh, cited already. Uh, in Luke 24, 46 and 8, uh, 40, 46 to 48, it reads, And he said to them, It is written that the great, the Christ, the Messiah, would suffer, suffer and rise from the dead on the third day, and that a, ch a change of hearts and lives 
uh, and repentance for the forgiveness of sins would be preached to, uh, in his name to all nations, starting in Jerusalem. Uh, you are witnesses of these things. In uh, John 20, 21, it reads, So Jesus said to them, Peace to you. As the Father has sent me, I also sent you. So this is the commission and the instruction uh, given to the Hebrew people. Um, then uh, this next subheading is uh, chapter. We, is, uh, we talk about uh, all the Hebrews are now among the Gentiles. In Psalm 18, 49, it reads, Therefore, I will give thanks to you, Lord, among the Gentiles, and sing praises to your name. Now, also I raise, uh, this is Ezekiel 20, 23. Also I raised my hand in an oath to those in the wilderness that I would scatter them among the Gentiles and disperse them throughout the countries. This is confirmation of what happened. Hosea, or Hosea 8, 8 reads, Israel is swallowed up. Now they are among the Gentiles like a vessel in which is no pleasure. So obviously God was not also entirely pleased with them. Um, but they had a mission uh, to do. They, had a, uh, they were God's, uh, their God's servants and they had work to do. In Psalm 61, 9 reads, The descendants shall be known among the Gentiles and their offspring among the people. All who see them shall acknowledge them that they are the prosperity whom the Lord has blessed. Um, this is a very important point. Um, that uh, they are, the Hebrew people are acknowledged because of the amount of hatred and scorn that they have, they have attracted and uh, the amount of uh, the, the level of persecution they have experienced. Uh, although people may deny who they are, but people know them without actually publicly stating uh, why they dislike them so much. Like Christ said, because they hated, hated me, they will also hate you. And that's, that's how it is. That's a Christian life. Not only for the Hebrew people, but also for spiritual Hebrews, Jews. In Micah 5, 8, it says, And the remnant of Jacob shall be among the Gentiles in the midst of many people, like a lion among the beasts of the, of the forest, like a young lion among flocks of sheep, who, if he passes through, both treads down and tears in pieces, and none can deliver. I think this points to the idea that whilst they're out there being persecuted, they will also be uh, a point of excellence. Uh, they will uh, prosper and do uh, outstanding feats and be noted by the world. Now we come. Uh, we talk about a little interlude here. We are talking about. Um, well, the process of getting them out of uh, Jerusalem and Judea. Uh, in Luke 19, 43 to 45, it reads, For days will come upon, upon you when your enemies will build an embankment around you, surround you and close you in on every side and level you and your children with you within you to the ground. And they will not leave you, they will not leave you one stone upon another, referring to the temple, because and also the uh, Jerusalem itself, uh, because you did not know the time of your visitation. Uh, Luke 21, 20 to 22 reads, But when you see Jerusalem surrounded by armies, um, then know that its desolation is near, and let those who are in Judea flee to the mountains and and let those who are in the midst of her de depart and let not those who are in the country enter her for these are the days of vengeance that all that all things which are written may be fulfilled. So they were predestined to be kicked out. Um, Jeremiah 30, 12, 11 to 12 reads, for I am with you, says the Lord, to save you, though I'm, I make a complete end of all the nations where I have scattered you. Um, I will not make a complete end of you, but I will correct you in justice and will not let you go altogether unpunished. For I am with you, says the Lord, to save you, though I make a full end 
of all nations where I have scattered you, yet I will not make a complete end of you, but I will correct you in justice and um, will not let you go altogether unpunished uh, for your for for thus says the Lord, your affliction is incurable, your wound is severe. So there is an element of punishment here that God was not going to let them go unpunished. And part of the reason of going into being scattered into the in the among the nation Gentiles is punishment. But there's also in, built in built built in that the uh, the role and the task that lay ahead for them. Um, in Isaiah 64, 64, 5 reads, uh, You meet him who rejoices and does righteousness, who remembers you in your ways. You are indeed angry, for we have sinned. In these ways we continue and we need to be saved. Uh, for the iniqu uh, Isaiah 57, 17 reads, For the iniquity of your covetousness I was angry uh, and struck you. I hid my I hid and was angry, and you went on back sliding in the way of his heart. And he went on back sliding in the way of his heart. 40, uh, Isaiah 47, 6, 6 reads, I was angry with my people. I've, prov um, I've profaned my inheritance and given them into your hand and showed them no mercy on the elderly. Uh, you laid your yoke very heavily. In Psalm 79, 5 reads, How long, Lord, uh, this is a cry from the Hebrew people, will you, will you be angry? Will you be angry forever? Will your je jealousy burn like a fire? Uh, Psalm 85, 5 reads, Will you be angry with us forever? Will you prolong your anger to all generations? Uh, Isaiah 54, 9 reads, For this is like the waters of Noah to me, for as I have sworn that the waters of Noah would no, would no longer cover the earth, so have I sworn that I would not be angry with you. Uh, so now I will not be angry with you, nor rebuke you. Uh, Isaiah 57, 16 reads, For I will not contend forever, nor will I always be angry, for the spirit which the for the spirit would fail before me, and the souls which I have made. Uh, so here there's a promise that he's not always going to be angry. We will punish them, but the punishment will come to an end. It uh, it, it 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 comes to an end. Uh, and whilst they were in the wilderness now, away from home, uh, without the privileges and the cover of God under one nation, uh, under the umbrella of one nation state, but now dispersed as minorities always among the Gentile um, nations, peoples, tribes, and tongues, uh, and the persecution that they experienced. Uh, in Isaiah 63, 16 to 19, um, there's a question. They, they, they ask a question. Uh, they're saying, you are in the state. They make statements and questions at the same time. They say, you are our father. Though Abraham doesn't know we are his children because he's passed away and uh, Israel doesn't recognize him because they can't see them. Uh, Lord, you are our father. You are called or your name is the one who, ha who has always saved us. Then they go on to say, Lord, why are you making us wander from your ways? Why do you make us stubborn, our hearts hard, so that we don't honor or fear you? For your sake, come back to us, your servants who belong to you. Come back to us, your servants who belong to you, the tribes of your inheritance. They're inviting him back, saying we are coming back. Your people, or the holy people, had I uh, had your temple um, in their possession, but only for a while. But now our enemies have walked on your holy place and crushed it, trampled down your sanctuary. We have become like people 
who never, who never, you never ruled, you never ruled over like those who have never worn your name. In Romans eleven twenty five, it reads, "For I do not desire, brethren, that you should be ignorant of the mystery, lest you should be wise in your own opinion that blindness in part has." happened to Israel until the fullness of the Gentiles has come in. So they were partly blinded, but now whilst in the, in the, um, among the Gentile nations, they came to their senses and they reflected and said, uh, they realized that they had been blinded because they didn't see what was so obvious, but now they understand. Um, and, um, and of course, this blindness of served the Gentiles uh, because now the word went out to the Gentiles, but it was always intended to go to the Gentiles. But um, the, the cost was that the Jews were were also blinded and uh, they were punished and dispersed as part of the God's plan for salvation. In Isaiah 63, 11 to 14, it reads, But... When the people remembered what happened long ago, this is now in the wilderness, in the days of Moses and the Israelites with him, where is the Lord who brought us through out of the sea? They are thinking about these things. Um, how the angel of the Lord that usually traveled, there was an angel of the Lord who traveled with them um, as a pillar of cloud and a pillar of fire, um, and the Lord showed them the way during the day and went ahead of them in the pillar of cloud and during, and during the night he was a pillar of fire to give them light. And in this way they could travel during day or night. Uh, these are the things that they are recalling of what, what the, the great God did for them. Um, and how he split the water so that they can walk on dry ground. And, um, yeah, um, which is Exodus uh, fourteen twenty one. Then Moses uh, extended, stretched out his hand over the sea all that night, and the wind, Lord drove back the sea with a strong east wind, making the sea become dry ground, and water was split. Uh, and how, like cattle, they went that went down to the valley. The spirit of the Lord gave the people a place of rest. Um, Lord. That is the way you led your people, and by this you won for yourself wonderful fame, a glorious reputation, because there were people who were onlooking. Not only the Hebrew people were watching their God at work, but they also had a mixed crowd, and there were people who were watching them, neighboring nations, and the word spread far and wide that by the when they were wandering through the wilderness, the tribes that they went past or the, the towns that they went past, um, uh, no, not within the, 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 the respective borders, but they saw them wandering in the, in the wilderness and, uh, they, they were frightened and they heard about this miracle. And, um, the amplified translation says, um, So did you lead your people to make yourself a beautiful and glorious name to prepare the way for the acknowledgement of your name by all nations? Now, this is the point that we are going to come to. And I want to tie this up with the shrine of the unknown, unknown God uh, later in the, in the subsequent series. Um, so now they've, uh, they've cried out to him and then, uh, Yeshaya decides to uh, assures them. Um, he says in Isaiah 44, 1 to 5, the Lord says, People of Jacob, you are my servants. Listen to me. People of Israel, I chose you. Um, Isaiah 41, 8 uh, reads, um, The Lord says, People of Israel, you are my servants. Um, people of Jacob, I chose you. You are from the family, the descendants of my friend Abraham. The Lord says, you are my servants. You, Israel, my servant, people of Jacob, I chose you. Uh, you are from the family, the descendants of my friend um, 
Abraham. I'm just emphasizing this, that he's not forgotten them and he's assuring them. And he goes on now in Isaiah 44, 2. Uh, that is what the Lord says, who made you, who formed you in your mother's body. Uh, people of Jacob, my servants, don't be afraid. Uh, you, <clears throat> then in three reads, I will pour out water for the thirsty land and make streams flow on dry land. I will pour out my spirits on your children, your descendants, your offspring, uh, your seed, and my blessings on your descendants. Your family will grow, sprout up like a tree in, tree in the grass, like poplar trees or willows, growing uh, beside streams of water. One person will say, I belong to the Lord. Another will use the name Jacob. Another will sign his name uh, or write with his hand, I am the Lord's. And another will use or call himself the name by the name of uh, Israel or Yashael. Uh, so basically he's going to, um, he's going to do things in a way, in a different way. Um, he's going to pour out his spirit on on the Hebrew people and their descendants, and that will bring them to the position that they uh, we needed to be in. Um, and in two Corinthians six one two it reads, uh, "We are working together." Uh, so we beg, uh, we beg you. Do not let the uh, the grace that you receive, this is Paul speaking, um, you see from God be for nothing. God says, at the right time, I have heard your prayers on the day of salvation. This is, um, and this, echoed, uh, this is actually from Isaiah 49, 8, that you will hear them and you will, you will answer them at the right time. Um, and uh, in 40, Isaiah 42, 6, it reads, The Lord says, I, the Lord, called you to do right, to demonstrate my righteousness, justice, or my righteous decree. By my righteous decree, I will hold your hand and protect, keep, guard you. You will be a sign of my agreement with um, my treaty for the people, a light to shine for all people, um, which is the Gentiles. And um, you will bring back the people to the land to restore, rebuild the land and give the land that is now ruined back to its owners, bequeath its desolate inheritances. I tell you that the right favorable time is now and the day of salvation is now. So, here we are talking about uh, the Messiah. He's the one who's going to bring Jacob back to God and bring the Gentiles. He's a sign. Um, yeah, you bring the, uh, the 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 Israelites uh, back. He will bring the bring the Israelites back to the land and rebuild it. But it's got a much a wider application in the sense that we are talking about. Uh, land being brought back under the uh, jurisdiction of the Almighty because right now it's under the control of the pagans. So this will be done through the salvation process. Uh, they need to roll back the uh, reclaim the land that was that that was lost. And but this will be done at a certain time. And the and the vehicle for this is Christ, who's the um, the which is the holy the. The, the good news, which is Christ, uh, the Redeemer, uh, the Savior. Uh, that's the message that they are taking, and it is going to be carried by the Hebrew people to all parts of the world. And in this way, they will reclaim the land that was lost, that has been lost. In uh, deliverance and salvation now, this is for the, uh, for the Hebrew people. Um, Um, Psalm 19, 4, it reads, uh, but their message goes out through all the world. Their words go everywhere on to the ends of the earth. The sky uh, is like a home uh, for the sun. Uh, 
like a, the sky is like a home for the sky. So the spread the word is spread out through spread through all the the, the world. And um, and was and when they have done this, and whilst they are doing that, they are also crying in Psalm one hundred six seven, saying, "Save us, O Lord, uh, our God, and gather us from among the Gentiles to give thanks to you." to your holy name so triumph um, is in your to triumph in your praise so this one here they, there's a number of translations i want to consider there's the expanded translation which reads the lord looked down um, yeah um then this this <clears throat> Actually, I've I've made a there's an oversight here. Uh, yeah, this is Psalm um, 194 from with a number from a number of uh, translations, and it says, "The Lord Lord looked down from heaven on all people to see if anyone understood, um, if anyone was looking to God for help." The Lord looks down. That's expanded. The international uh, translation is the Lord looks down from the heavens upon humanity to see if anyone shows discernment as he searches for God. Uh, the voice translation reads the eternal leans over from heaven to survey the sons of Adam. No one is uh, missed and no one can hide. He searches to see who understands true wisdom, who desires to know the true God. The message translation reads, um, the light, the life light, uh, was the real thing. Every person entering life, he brings into light. The life we're talking about Christ, he has light. And that's the real thing which he shines on everybody who enters into life, who, who's born on, on earth. Then, um, more specifically, so God is always looking down to see if there are people who understand, who have the heart, who have a willing heart and a, a willing uh, soul, who are seeking Him, and uh, on them He 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 um, He concentrates His uh, His powers. Um, well, He basically covers them with His Word, uh, with His grace. And uh, that's how he gets them. But he's always looking for willing hearts. Not that others uh, who are unwilling have never been approached. They would have been approached, but they would have rejected. But anyway, he's long suffering. He gives them enough time um, for, for, and he keeps on approaching them in various ways to see if they can, if they can um, have a change of heart. Then we now talk about uh, Yashael, the. Um, we are the apple of his eye. Um, in Psalm 33, 12, 15 reads, Blessed is the nation whose God is the Lord. Uh, the people he has chosen as his inheritance. The Lord looks from heaven. He sees all the sons of men. From the place of his dwelling he looks or on all the inhabitants of the earth. He fashions their hearts individually. He considers all their works. So God, yes, he looks down on his inheritance, the Hebrew people, but he also looks down on all people on earth to see, and he works on each heart individually. Um, yeah, we, we talked about um him looking down on uh, his brood uh, on his uh, his uh, special his, his inheritance the message translation says from high in the sky god looks around he sees all adam's brood we mentioned this but i just want to emphasize the fact that whilst the people were are in the wilderness he is always looking out for his 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 brood and this brood in as much even though they are not a nation state they are his people and he's very, he's jealous about, and he's very protective about them. So he does not want them to be disturbed. And uh, we saw this, 
how he it really upsets him and he he punishes those people who over who overstep their bounds uh he did that in uh in Egypt, he punished the gods and the people and the kings. Uh, he destroyed uh, Babylon the first, if you can call it that. Uh, we, are now, we now have Babylon, the extend, extended one, which covers the whole world, which we may also uh, label uh, Gentiles, uh, nation states. Uh, and he considers, he fashions their hearts individually, um, and he considers everybody's works. So here now we have um, the Almighty here. Um, in Hebrews 8, 10, he reads, and this is the agreement, uh, the covenant contract that I make with the people, the house of Israel at that time. After those days, says the Lord, I will put my teaching laws in their hearts and write them in their... No, I'll put my teachings and laws in their minds and write them in their hearts. I will be their God and they will be my people. Uh, in Hebrews 10, verse 15 to 18, it reads, The Holy Spirit also tells us about this. First, he says, this is the agreement, uh, uh, covenant, I will make with them at that time, says the Lord. I will put my teaching laws in their hearts and write them on their minds. Then he says, their sins and the evil things they do, I will not remember anymore. Now then, these have been forgiven. There is no more need for a sacrifice for sins. Uh, that is true, but I want to apply this to the to the Hebrew um, experience exclusively. Um, that the covenant that he's talking about is it that he was going to write to 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 the uh, write his uh, teachings in their hearts, and um, yeah, you put his teachings in their hearts and write them on their minds is actually from Jeremiah. So. This is the new covenant that he made with the Hebrew people. It's been applied, it's now being applied uh, more generally. But it, this is the thing uh, that whilst they were in the in the in the world in the wilderness or in the in the world, um, no longer a nation state. This is how he was going to communicate with them, to make them effective in the assignment that he has he has um, he has given them, which is basically to take the gospel. Uh, teach the gospel to the uh, Hebrews in the diaspora and also to the to the Gentiles. And Paul mentions uh, the idea that uh, if a wild um, branch is grafted into the vine, um, yes, it will grow, but it's much easier for the natural one to, to be grafted back in. Uh, so he's communicating in a special way with his people uh, to bring them back to him. That especially now, they realize the mistake that they made, the error that they made in uh, straying away from him. Then uh, in Jeremiah 31, 31, and then 33 to 35, it reads, Behold, the days are coming, says the Lord, when I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel, with the house of Judah, but this is the covenant that I will make with the house of Israel after those days, says the Lord. I will put my laws in their hearts and write it in their hearts, and I will be their God, and they shall be my people. No more shall every man teach you on his neighbor, and every man his brother says, um, he says, know the Lord for Yes, to teach every every man his uh, brother, saying, Know the Lord, for they all shall know me, from the least of them to the greatest of them, says the Lord. For I will forgive their iniquity and their sin, and their sin I will remember no more. So he's been working and he's working on his people, even though they are out of uh, the nation, uh, out of their uh, out of their land. 
Uh, in Luke 2022, 20, uh, it reads, Likewise, we also took the cup after supper, saying, This cup is the new covenant of in my blood, which is shed for you. So now we we said that actually uh, the Hebrews have been forgiven, and uh, this is confirmed in Romans 11, 26, 27. And that is how, in this way, or um, Israel shall be saved. It is written in the scripture, the Savior, uh, the deliverer will, deliverer will come from Jerusalem. Uh, he will take away all evil, wickedness, uh, godliness, godlessness from the family of Jacob, um, whose sons became uh, the 12 tribes. And I will make this agreement with those people when I take away their sins. Um, so that's a promise that he made. In Isaiah 27, 9, it reads, This is how Israel will be forgiven. This is how its sins will be taken away. I will crush the rocks of the pagan altars and um, to dust and no more Asherah, idols, sacred trees or poles dedicated to the god goddess Ash Asherah or altars, incense will be left standing. So uh, I think this is a convenient point for us to uh, to uh, to take a break. We will continue in part three, where we I want to ex to ex to go into more detail on the conversion process and the and how and how the um, the Gentiles were converted to Christianity, if I can use that word, or to to the knowledge or brought to the knowledge of uh, the great Haya. Um, that's the part that that's part three, and that may, part three may actually I may split it into two parts um, because I want to preach to continue teaching on this. But coming out of um, Isaiah forty nine verses eight and nine and other uh, scripture, so on this note. We can do have a in introspection um, coming out of Revelation uh, verse, chapter nine, verse nine, out of the expanded translation. So I went to the angel and told him to give me the small scroll, and he said to me, "Take the scroll and eat it," symbolizing the internalizing of the word. It will be sour, bitter in your stomach because it is a message of judgment, but in your mouth it will be sweet as honey because it is God's word and because it brings salvation and vindication to his people. And our uh, benediction comes out of Numbers chapter 6 verses 22 to 27, again from the expanded translation, and it reads, The Lord said to Moses, Tell Aaron and his sons, this is how you should bless the Israelites. Say to them, May the Lord bless you and keep you and guard you. May the Lord show you his kindness, make his mercy, his face shine upon you. And may the Lord have mercy on you and uh, have and be gracious to you. May the Lord watch over you and may he lift his face, presence, countenance uh, upon you and give you peace. So Aaron and his sons will bless the Israelites with my name, put my name upon the children of Yashael, and I will bless them. And in this way, they are to put my name on the people of Yashael so that I can bless them. That statement, that sentence was repeated. And that's from um, the common Jewish Bible. Thank you, and may God bless you all.